wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Fuad Kassab. Guys, welcome to A Quirky Journey. Today we have a special guest with us, my good friend Marcus Pease, and of course, our co host Joe Witten. Hi, guys, how's it going? Hey, uh, I'm good. Boo boo, Jojo. I'll tell you what, I'm a bit honored to be introduced just before Jojo does. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit humbling that, that Marcus Pierce gets introduced before Joe Witten when. when <laughs> oh, they're used to me. Guys, it's a Middle East hospitality me. thing. Like, I have to say, like, you have to honor the guests what? first. Oh, I thought you were going to say the man first, and I was going to say, hey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, that's where I thought he was going as well, John. I was like, hold on a minute here. Like, yeah. I to press we have this and start recording again. We'll have a fight on there. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, guys. Very happy to be here. No, no, come back. Come back. <laughs> oh, I thought you were leaving. <laughs> no, I'm here. Not leaving? Don't go away, okay, food. Good. Oh, well, guys, so uh, I've just finished a four-day water fast and uh, it's been a huge challenge for me and we were going to record a podcast about this and we were talking to Marcus and he said that he's done a, uh, a fast as well and we thought it would be great to have two opinions about fasting and talk about the two experiences together in one place and have uh, a broader view of what fasting is for different people because I don't want to give you this narrow view from my perspective. So, uh, Marcus, thanks for coming on the show and uh, thanks for being open to sharing your experience about what is sometimes a like a difficult topic to, for people to talk about because uh, for a lot of people, and we've had a couple of comments um, when we shared this on Facebook, calling it starvation and i think there's a lot of misconception around fasting and what it is for the human body and uh, mm. we'd love to sort of talk about it from um both perspectives but let's kick it off with you man because you did it first tell me when was it that you, that you did your fast <laughs> <laughs> well thank you well um i first of all want to I, I genuinely want to thank you for having me on because as i said to you before we hit record there's not really many platforms where you can openly share your experiences i haven't shared them on 100 not out um because it just didn't seem appropriate it can be very divisive i I haven't Mm. told anyone that i did a five-day water fast because i just couldn't be bothered engaging in the conversation because i kind of knew i'd be judged um people would tell me like you said Fuad, that i'm starving myself it's ridiculous why would you do that to yourself so on and so forth and um Mm. and i think like you said um everyone's going to have a view and really we're just sharing today our experiences um, because we both would have done it for different reasons um, and it's and it's the very personal reason. So I did mine uh, for five days at the beginning of 2017 um, and yeah, I did it because I just, I ha- from memory I had a number of things happening in my body uh, which I thought a fast would help with and um, the main one was my energy. I just felt sluggish and um, to give a bit of a backstory, I'm in the in my in my former in my past life, but many years ago, I've been vegan for seven years. I went off the grog for five years. I've done multiple juice cleanses, um, done all types of I'm not going to call them hacks, but just I've done lots of things. I've done salt flushes, enemas, colonics, <laughs> um, you know, just so many things. And so I think. Um, that naturally we're always looking for variety and doing something. I wanted a challenge. I didn't want to do a juice cleanse. I've had that much um, Kabbalah from Don Tolman over the years and I've had Udo's oil for days on end and all the other green juices and the rest. And I was like, no, nah, I just want something different. And, and I wanted something challenging. And so I felt sluggish. I knew I was a healthy individual, but I felt sluggish. And I thought, well, uh, let's do something different. Um, and so I started looking into a fast. I'd had on my bookshelf... The Bragg's Healthy Lifestyle Fasting Book. I think I bought it back in 2010, probably at the height of my vegan days when I was having quinoa and greens every morning for breakfast. <laughs> and it had sat on my shelf for a good seven years. And, um, and I read it and I was fascinated by it. And that essentially provided the, the template for me to, to do the fast. And I decided five days. There were recommendations three days up to 10 days. I went kind of somewhere in the middle. It was only going to be five or seven. And I just made it a Monday to Friday fast because I I just didn't want to be with the kids on a weekend when I was Mm. doing a fast. That would have felt hellish to them and to me because my kids are massive foodies. And um, (laughs) Monday to Friday, it was just going to be easier. 
Joe also did a fast recently for around two hours. Do you want to talk to us? (laughs) (laughs) I was going to butt in before and say, how come you're not including my fast? It was 24 hours. Come on. (laughs) Joe, tell us about your fast. Yeah, 24 hey, hours that- is impressive. Can you, Matt, would you be kind enough to share that? Because yes. I keep on playing with the idea of doing regular 24 yeah. hour fast. You know, in, in many religions, they recommend it yeah. once a week, in some religions, yeah. once a quarter. But yeah, what did you do and how did you do it? How did you find it? Well, I've always been interested in fasting, but it was never something I thought I could do because when I was really unwell and just didn't know I was really unwell, um, I had to eat every two to three hours or I would be a shaky mess. My blood sugar levels were all over the place and I would get to the stage where I had to just lay down because it was I was just so exhausted from my blood sugar problems. Um, so I thought there is no way I could fast because I, it would just kill me. Um, so I, I'd never really tried it. I've done days where I've had mostly broth and soup and that's about the closest I've ever gotten. Um, so when Fuad started the water fast, um, I think we were talking after he'd done a day or so and, and I said, well, I haven't eaten anything today yet. It was like mid morning. And I said, all I've had is my soul water and iodine and, um, what else had I had vitamin C and like supplements, you know, like, so I haven't had anything today. And he said, well, when was the last time you ate? And I said, well, last night at dinner. And he said, well, why don't you just go all day till dinner tonight and yeah. um and try a fast and i said well maybe i'll have just just liquid broth and he said yeah that's mm. a good start so i ended up only having four cups of broth um for the 24 hours and um it's just amazing to me how much my body has changed in the last three years i didn't have any of that low blood sugar stuff which i usually would have i didn't have any um like headaches and hunger pains really just a tiny bit not nothing ma- major like a, just a little bit of a hungry feeling by the end of the day um i did enjoy my dinner that night i must say <laughs> what did you, what did you have what did you have what did you break your fast with uh, i just had a basically a stage one intro gap soup <laughs> so it's kind of like um it was i i went to the butchers on the way home from wherever i was and just got lamb shanks and pop them into a big pot and simmered that with heaps of water. And then when they were soft, I added um, cauliflower, broccoli, oh, carrots, onion, you know, just a few basic vegetables, nothing too starchy, and um, salt and pepper, and that was it. So that's what I had that night. Um, so it was still quite light. Um, but yeah, yeah, I was, I was quite, broth, yeah. yeah, I was quite proud of myself because I thought, you know what, I could actually do this for longer and I've never done it in my life. So I, I knew I couldn't complain to Fuad because he was on a water fast. So <laughs> I just had to try it and not complain. <laughs> and I was like two and a half days into my fast as well. It's not like I just yeah. started mine. So. Yeah, there's so yeah. many directions. I mean, I think this is a great conversation. There's so many ways that this can, that, that yeah. this can go. But um, for why don't you share your experiences? Oh, sorry, I don't mean to sound like the host here. I know I'm the guest, but I, I'm just... <laughs> Conscious that Joe you know, and I could bang on, and we won't get away. Yeah, that's so right. You're, you're the most recent faster of yeah. the group. Why, let's hear about your experiences in detail. I've had a, a long history of intermittent fasting. So ever since I started eating a low carb paleo diet, uh, it's been very easy for me to skip up to 24 hours of food. It's it's no problem. So whenever I don't feel like eating, I don't, I don't eat. So quite often 16 hours uh, of not eating is normal for me. And I just go with my appetite and how I feel. And this kind of fasting is called intermittent fasting. So it's not really scheduled. It's not regular. It doesn't happen all the time. It's not like you go for extended periods, but it's intermittent as the name suggests. So and that's what I've been trying to aim towards. Yeah. This kind of fasting yeah. is, um, there's a lot of studies now linked with longevity, hormonal control, um, clearing up cellular debris, all that kind of stuff. And I do feel the benefit of that. But to be honest, the water fast in a very, very short period of time has far outweighed the benefits of intermittent fasting for me very quickly. So I can see very quickly what the difference is. And I'll, I'll share that too. Now the yeah, reason that, why, that's what I think we, we want to know is, is, is yeah, yeah, exactly how is it. What's um, the difference? The intermittent yeah. fasting. 
Yeah. So, I'll, but I'll I'll get to that. But I'll share as to why I'm doing a, I, why I did a four day water fast. So, as you guys know, like I'm a caveman born into uh, you know the year 1980. <laughs> so it's not really like uh, I don't feel I'm in the right time or place to actually be. So I'm always trying to be closer to nature and to explore more the wild aspects of myself and to see what this body is capable of, especially after being born with a lot of chronic illnesses and having all these issues that I've had with obesity and blood sugar control and acne and eczema. I've always wanted to see what this body is capable of if you gave it the ideal human conditions that it was uh, born to deal with. So fasting has always been something that I wanted to do. And um, I also know from uh, all these traditional cultures, whether it's a religious or, or a cultural thing, uh, people have done wilderness fasts for thousands of years. And uh, it, it's a, in the Bible, it's uh, something that they do in Islam, they, they do that even in Judaism and any kind of hunter-gatherer culture when they want, for instance, to transition a young man into adulthood, they'd send him off to the wilderness for a fast and then he'd come back. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that um, all the weaker aspects of the self, the childlike behaviors that uh, are lingering within the human being that he's not being faced with, they start falling off in, in that kind of fast because there's nothing to run away from. You can't run away from anything in that kind of situation. You have to sit in one spot. You have to contemplate your life. And the, the body is in this kind of survival mode, so there's no inputs coming into it. All you, have, all you can do is to deal with yourself. And it's a time of difficulty. It's an ordeal uh, for the person, but it's a hormetic ordeal. So hormesis is the pro- is the idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And it's the kind of thing mm-hmm. that happens within a gym environment. You go and you do your exercise and it causes a stress on your body, but then that stress is beneficial. Even though you've stressed it, after you recover, you're, you're stronger. And this is the whole idea. And I was telling my friend the idea of a wilderness fast. And he goes, but why would you do it? He goes, why would you do something like that? I mean, of course, you're going to come back stronger and better and every year. But why? But why would you do something like that? And I started <laughs> laughing because I, that, that would be exactly the reason why I would do it. Because I want to experience what our ancestors have done traditionally for a long period of time. Something that they thought was difficult but worthwhile. And um, I've booked myself in for a wilderness fast in April this year to go and do this actually near Coffs Harbor in in an area called Glen Ray. And it's an organized um, wilderness fast. It's in an American Indian tradition, but it's not really specific to a religion. So there's no religious dogma from anyone on top of it. So it's open for anyone who wants to try to do anything um, in that and just be uh, with themselves in a safe environment in the wilderness. And I was freaking out about it because I have a a primal fear of the dark. Uh, I've never actually spent any time uh, in the wilderness without any cover uh, on top of me, without any tents or anything like that. And that's what would be happening then. Um, Thing and now lots of water. Yeah, yeah. and and like you know, I worry a lot about Australian spiders and snakes, and I've got that fear too. So I thought I'll eliminate the fear of going to the wilderness and fasting, I'll get the fasting thing out if I can do it a few <laughs> times before I get to April. So my intention was to do it maybe once or twice before April. And um, what happened it was on Sunday, I think it was, my, my brother came for a visit and we had a late lunch at three o'clock. So I skipped dinner. I thought, hey, I'll, I'll have breakfast tomorrow. I, I won't have dinner because I'm not hungry, which I do often. And then breakfast came and I was like, mm, I'll, I'll just skip breakfast because I'm not hungry. And then lunchtime came and I wasn't hungry. And I thought, okay, it's four days it's going to be. You know, I'm going to do the four days like, <laughs> like it is in the wilderness that I'm going to be doing. So I, I, I stuck with four days. And I went on this journey for four days of having nothing but water for four days. And I foraged my own spring water from a local spring here because I wanted to use the highest quality water. And that's all I had for four days was just water. And it was definitely a big challenge. But Marcus, let's go back to your story. No, 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 no. Let's carry this on. So what were you expecting? (laughs) What were you expecting from the fast? So once you decided you were going to do the four days, what were you expecting was going to happen to you? Um, Yeah, I want to know that. What were you hoping for? From what? Like during the experience or after or both? Well, because you said earlier that this surpassed your intermittent fast Mm, in terms of yeah. So, 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 what were you expecting, and then what happened for you to say that it surpassed your intermittent um, fast? 
Well, it first of all showed me how strong my will and determination is. Uh, an intermittent yeah. fast is like Mickey Mouse compared to four days. Mm-hmm. Like you just, um, after four days you go, wow, like I can pretty much do anything. Like yeah. It's very good for your self-esteem, I would, oh, I would say. Oh my God. Long, well, especially, especially I think if you're in a home where your wife and kids are cooking and eating and you're around that and you're sticking to it, that's amazing. Like that's hard. Yeah, that was that was so challenging. Like every time, because I work with food all the time, I have to. Yeah. Um, I constantly like, send him messages about food. I had are to. You stop. Guys, are you guys in the food business, eh? Yeah, uh, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said yeah. to him, "Do you know how hard it is to message you and not th- not mention food?" <laughs> food, yeah, totally. And I would I would go crazy. Like I'd get a photo of food, and I would catch myself two minutes in just looking at this photo. <laughs> And uh, your like, name is almost like food. You just got a you yeah, name there. Like it's, <laughs> genet- it's my whole my whole genetic makeup is food. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm trained at it like a tiger looking at its prey or something. And I just like I want to eat it. And like Lainey was sauteing <laughs> onions, and it was like it smelled like I was actually in heaven. Like I had a a, a vision of what heaven would smell like. And guys, it smells like fried. <laughs> I'm telling you, and <laughs> and bacon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, um, it was incredible how how, uh, how much your senses of food become really really aware and actually your senses get heightened about a lot of stuff um, but it was yeah. very challenging what I, what surprised me was I didn't get the uh, blood sugar fluctuations that most people get they tell you that you feel like um, really hungry I felt zero hunger for four days not, a, not, not once yeah. did I feel actually any physical hunger I felt the symptoms of hunger which is fatigue and uh, brain fog and uh, difficulty moving especially on the third day that was the most difficult part um, then the fourth day I recovered and I started feeling better and then uh, by the end of the fourth day I started eating and things started going back to normal but um, what I what happened was my eyes are clear, my skin is clear. I honestly look like a year younger. Um, I've yeah. lost weight. Um, I have um, his, more energy. His wife, his wife said he's glowing. Yeah. I, really, I really am. I should. She said, "Go take your press shot now," because I don't think yeah, I'm quick, like that quick. ever again. <laughs> and I started laughing, and uh, um, so that was really the uh, like just the the amazing experience itself was how I was able to get through it, how my body was completely fine to operate without food for four days. Something that, you know, a lot of us will eat maybe six, seven, eight times a day, like with between meals and snacks and to be able to go without just feels like you've been released from this kind of habitual pattern that you haven't really, um, you haven't really looked at it deeply, whether it serves you, whether it's something that is actually good for you, whether it's innate to you. And now, uh, as I'm starting to recover, I know then within the next couple of days, because now I'm eating really small portions, but a little bit more often, because if I eat a lot, yeah. I'm feeling sluggish. So I'm having to yeah. keep my, um, my amount of food smaller. Um, but I know when my body returns to... Uh, proper digestion that I'll be able to really tune into it and to know exactly what it needs and how much of it it needs without having to eat obsessively or emotionally. And I found that that really cleared up for me what aspects of eating are emotional and what are actually physical needs. And it becomes Mm. very clear to you afterwards that a lot of the times that you eat, it's just purely emotional so that you can just get on with your day and somehow like, you know, you, you 100%. Want, yeah do so, you mean like yeah. do you mean have, like a habit or do you mean like an attachment to food i suppose you're saying an uh, attachment yeah so both so there's both, both. Yeah. the habit of food and then also let's say you get an, you get you a piece of work done and you feel accomplished so then you go treat mm-hmm. yourself to something or you get yeah like that like yeah. that last after dinner piece of chocolate yeah, that, that, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> Well, we've created almost a, a, a jail or a prison for ourselves around food, as you oh, said, yeah. through our, that, that attachment. We've got, because we don't have a food supply problem and we can 
eat whenever we want, however we want, and however much we want. We've created that Pavlov's dog, and I'll put my hand up mm. right now. Like I know it's eggs and greens for breakfast. It's a, my chocolate pudding cup for morning tea. It's a protein salad lunch. It's afternoon tea if I have it. Might not be a smoothie, you know. And then dinners a you know meat and three veg and a bit of chocolate after dinner, Joe, as you say. <laughs> um, Pavlov's dog is ringing six times a day. Pavlov's dog's bell is mm-hmm. ringing six times a day, um, mm. and you almost become. Dependence probably too harsh a word, but you definitely become expectant of the routine. And as you said, for the You're hard done you know, by if you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, and that's I think there's a bit of rebellion in the first day. Not rebellion, not the right word, but you you, you kind of realise how attached you are in the first day or two, where everyone else is eating. I don't know about you, Fu, but I didn't really want to eat with the kids. I made breakfast every morning, looking at the beautiful eggs and greens that I was making, and only serving enough for the for the kids and Sarah. Um, but I didn't want to join them. At for lunch um, because it just didn't feel, I didn't feel like the best version of dad would be there and I didn't want the kids to attempt to understand whilst I was doing a water fast. Mm. Like it didn't seem like a too much of an adult concept for someone who was four at the time and I think May was seven. But what about your sleep? I mean, I, I had a lot of day naps because even though it was a working week, I did, I was, I think I did an online program that I'd purchased and watched all the videos on there and just took notes, handwritten notes whilst I was lying down in the in the office um i wasn't doing brainiac stuff i wasn't doing lots of emails and content creation and the rest and if i needed to sleep i would sleep and i did a lot of exercise not hard work but i did a lot of hiking so i got plenty of time to be um restful and and have sleeps how did you go with the fatigue did you honor it with sleeps or did you push through or <laughs> you you mirrored my experience exactly actually marcus that's exactly what i did so i hiked as well as slept a lot and rested. I didn't do the brainiac work or anything like that. It's funny because before I started the fast, I said to Joe, hey, Joe, <laughs> I said, for the next few days, I'm going to have a lot of mental fog. My output's going to be down. My mood's going to be bad. And I'm not going to get a lot of work done. And you're going to have to put up with me. Is that okay? And she goes, you do that every month for me. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> as, in, as in he does it for me. He puts up with me. Yeah. <laughs> And he just laughs so hard and he's like, yeah, you're right. (laughs) It's the least I can do. (laughs) I love that great friends can talk like that amongst each other. (laughs) Um, That's beautiful. That is beautiful. And I would like to to ask you, Fufu, as you speak about just your mental fog, my mental fog lasted longer than I thought it would. And it was only when I went for hikes or a long walk on the beach, jumped in the water, completely changed my state to get out of any kind of malaise I might be thinking about, you know, energy or the rest. I kind of did whatever I could to distract myself from the fact that I was on a fast. Um, How did you go with your mental fog? Did it lift in time? Uh, Did you have any strategies to kind of, you know, put it to one side? Often I just had a sleep or jumped in the ocean. What did you do? Yeah, so I... And the first two days, I had very little problems with mental fog, even though I needed to rest on the second day. But it, I didn't yeah, we pretty much just kept working. And now and then yeah. he'd say, oh, I'll go have half an hour rest. It wasn't really. Um, yeah, and first on, couple on of the third day, that yeah, okay. was the hardest one. So the third day was uh, extremely, extremely physically tired. Uh, so I would be doing my stretches and between every pose, I'd have to rest, uh, which wasn't yeah. something I had to do the couple of days before. And then I went and slept for three hours that afternoon. So it took, like, I went yes. uh, 12 to 3.30 and, and something like that. Yeah, and it was a long time. And I definitely found that getting out in the sun and moving in nature brought up a lot more energy. It just, it seems, mm-hmm. I think, what happens is, uh, if you think of it, about it from a hunter-gatherer perspective, that your body's going to try to conserve its energy as much as it can while you're resting. But if you're out and about, that means you're either running from something or you're trying to hunt something to eat. And uh, then your body is going to sort of try to switch on the chemistry that allows you to be more mentally clear and more energetic so that you can get the task done. And going into nature seems to have uh, mimicked that, even though I wasn't actually going to try to hunt something. But um, that was definitely what I noticed. Like I don't have a, a beach to jump into here, but I've got a, a rock that I bushwalk to almost every day and I sit on it and I just look at the wilderness. And every time I did that and I came home, I felt much, much better. And um, 
but it took even a little bit of um, convincing for me to get out on the hike every day. Like I had to sort of go, all right, you're feeling exhausted. You're going to have to do this and then you're going to feel better afterwards. And, but Lainey yeah. helped convince you by cooking bacon, so you ran out the door. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, that has to go on here. Like, I, I completely respect what they did in the house. They, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, we have it was just so funny because, like, we yeah. were messaging and, and then he goes, Lainey's cooking onions. I have to go. And he just disappeared just like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so the funny. kids the kids were banging on to me about, Daddy, are you missing chocolate? And Daddy, are you oh, missing Oh, no. Can we just not talk about it? Can no we way. just talk about it? Um, <laughs> so all right, Foo. Now we've spoken about this pre-call, but it's definitely something I want to bring up. Did you do anything to measure physically? And, I was, and I'll, I'll tell the audience that I uh, took a wee sample every morning to see what was happening to my urine. But did you do anything to measure what was happening over the course of the four days? Well, the, the only thing that I really looked at was my weight to see what was going on with the weight. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I didn't Tell actually about that. I didn't, um, bottle up my urine and label it, Mark. <laughs> no. But I'd love to hear about your experience well, and whether you still have the be, samples to, or not. Just to be intimate, I'm going to keep those samples forever to see them for me. <laughs> and one day in about 50 years, maybe fermented wee might be a superfood or something. Your poor um, children, they'll inherit it. What is this? <laughs> this is like 15-year-old, uh, you know. Uh, uh, amazing, yeah. It's going to be worth a fortune. Uh, Go on. When you're famous, Marcus, we'll sell it. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. On eBay, here we go. Um, so, so, again, following the Braggs um, kind of, you know, system, it was just um, more out of curiosity, I think, that they suggested to see to see some physical proof of the body cleansing itself um, and, the, and the urine being a great visual way to do that. And so all, all I'll say is that if you look at the, my sample from day one, it's, it's brown and it still gets browner to this day. And if you look at the sample from day five, it's clear. Not, not clear. I, think, I still don't think any, any urine is clear white like as in water. I think all urine mm. is yellow. But this is very clear in that you can look through the bottle and see out the other side whereas day one it's just so murky um Mm. and i just think it's fascinating to see the progression Mm. as your body cleanses which which um we don't necessarily get with an intermittent fast we feel the physical symptoms of improvement but to see to see the body working was a wonderful thing good for the confidence good to know that things were happening um but you know i just it's uh, just, you know, I don't know what will happen to those uh, samples, but um, every time I look at them, I'm they like, it just reminds day, me of the value. Well, it just reminds me of the value of the, of the exercise because, you know, I forget about, you know, the hikes were great. You know, I did enjoy my sleep, but there were some times where you just, oh, you're just flat. You're in a bad mood. You're not good company at all. Um, you're better off being by yourself, really. Um, and it was just, you know, it's just a good visual reminder um, did, to do did it. You, but you um, disturbed? did you have any problems sleeping at night? I don't think so. I know when when I first met Sarah many years ago, thirteen years ago, in fact, when I was smoking and drinking and eating the standard, the sad standard Australian diet, I had night sweats like every night, and I just thought that was quote unquote normal. Um, <laughs> but now I recognise, you know, that was definitely a sign of toxicity, inflammation and the rest. I don't remember if I if I had any night sweats as my body was detoxing. I just remember uh, from this five-day fast that I did have a day sleep probably most days and as you said, for sometimes three hours, sometimes an hour. Yeah. Um, and I definitely noticed like, you know, I've got a bit of a chubby belly, so to speak. I definitely noticed that was reduced. But then I also observed that that kind of came back pretty quickly after I ate food. So I'm always curious, mm-hmm. like, is that, is that drop in weight over the course of the fast, you know, is that water retention or, or you know, is, what, what is it? Because it's not like I didn't weigh myself in terms of kilos, but um, I think I might have taken measurements. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I lost seven or eight centimetres off my gut over the five days. Wow. Yeah. But I probably popped five centimetres back on the day after. But it wasn't because I was eating terrible food. I think it was just because my 
you know, some people call it an inflammatory response, right? But well, it's all, I, I just think yeah. that's, yeah, I don't know, but that's probably about, one. A one little thing. bit about pre and post food maybe, and then we can talk, uh, get into that a little bit. Because what, what I was doing, as I said, I had the low carb uh, food that I was eating all the way up to the fast, which means that my body was running off fat and it's called keto adapted or fat adapted that state. And that means that um, all your body's glycogen stores, which is usually stored in the liver, not usually, which is stored in the liver and the muscles, has been used up to get you to that state of keto adaptation. So you don't have any glycogen in your muscles or your liver. And for every molecule of glycogen, there's four molecules of water that bind to it to allow it to be stored within the muscles. And you can store up to, say, 400 grams of glycogen in your body which means you've got around one and a half kilos of water as well on top of it that keeps it in there. Um, is that right? For, yeah, one and a half. So you've got around two kilos of just stored sugar and water that is kept in there. Apart from any water that is stored uh, through inflammation in your body, so if you've got any kind of inflammation, the body will put water around it. Um, when you go through keto adaptation and fasting, your body lets go of that glycogen. It uses it up. And then it uh, lets go of the water so you get a rapid weight loss. And it also promotes uh, a reduction of inflammation. So then your body's getting rid of the water that was used to keep that inflammation cooled down. And that leaves your system too. Um, so then as you start eating again, depending on what you eat, uh, there will be, without doubt, some sort of inflammation that will start coming back into your body and your body will start retaining water again. But if you're careful about what you're eating, then it means that you can reduce the inflammation and can continue with an anti-inflammatory diet that will help your body not regain the inflammation. So um, that's, that's part of it. And another part, uh, I'll talk about more benefits later, but so looking, looking at that, I'd be interested to see what your post, pre and post meals were, if you can remember. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I broke the fast with a chicken broth that had tomato and basil sitting in it for about 15 minutes. And it was today, to this day, one of the favourite meals of my lifetime. Yeah. And I think I made that meal every day for the next week because I was just obsessed with it because it just reminded yeah. me of my return to food. Yeah. Um, pre, look, pre, pre-fast, I just would have been my standard, you know, eggs and greens for breakfast, uh, tahini with cacao and a bit of honey for morning tea. And... Uh, uh, you know, maybe a boiled egg salad or protein salad for lunch and, and, and meat and three veg for dinner. I may have had a piece of chocolate the night before my fast. Salad. You know what, I probably would have because I knew I would have been starting the fast the next day. <laughs> but, but I just want to share this because when, when you were talking about this, it just, you know, reminded me of that comment that someone made at the beginning around starvation. I always remember um, because I probably, you know, I probably grew up in a family where that, that viewpoint would be shared around starvation. I remember when I learned about how many calories are in sugar, because you were talking about sugar and fat, you know, and essentially if you're on keto, you, you burn all your fat stores and then you start burning your fat, which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. And if you're starting a fast with no sugar in your body, you just go straight into fat burning. Now, if someone, I always remember the stats that you've got four calories in a gram of sugar or four calories in a gram of protein and nine calories in a gram of fat. And so I just always say to myself, if I pinch my guts, I've probably got two kilos, three kilos of fat that I could just pinch around my body very easily. And if I've got three kilos, and let's say it's more because it's going to be more, but if I've got three kilos of fat sitting on my body at nine calories per gram, I've got 27,000 calories just sitting in my body doing sweet stuff all that yeah. are going to keep me alive whilst I'm not eating. And yeah. that for me is... 10 or maybe even 20 days because I'm not really doing much of life without any need for food. And so my view is the bigger someone is, the longer they can live um, oh, uh, without food. You can survive, yeah. Because they've got so much fat to store. It's that whole bear that goes into the cave for yeah, winter true. or whenever it is. They go in there as fat as buggery because they've been eating for a whole season and then they don't they don't they go without food for three months or six months or yeah, some like ridiculous that. amount of time because they're just burning fat. We're no different. As much as we want to separate ourselves from animals most of the time, we are no different in my view. I could be wrong, but that's the way I see it. We've got thousands of calories sitting in our body 
waiting to be burned. It, it gets even better than what you're saying because you're, you're pinching your belly and you're looking at what's called the subcutaneous fat, which is the fat between the skin and your muscles. So that fat is actually not a problem for people. This is the, the uh, inert fat. It doesn't cause any chronic health issues for us. The problem is the fat that you can't see, which is the visceral fat. It sits be- between mm. the muscles and the organs. And that one, you don't know it's there. So the body is so good at burning that stuff when it's fasting. So Mm. I'll give you this analogy. Imagine you have a house and you've got a fire burning on it, right? And that fire, you're in the middle of winter and you've run out of wood. And all you've got is furniture around the house that you can burn. Which furniture would you throw in first? The old stuff. Yeah, the the rubbish that you just don't want to burn. Yeah. yeah, you're not, you're not going to put the Victorian uh, you, you know, cabinet in there and chuck that in. You're going to put, put the IKEA furniture that's broken in the garage and you're going to throw that out in, on the fire. And um, that's what the body does there. So it'll start selectively burning the, uh, the bad stuff. It'll burn the fat that is next to the organs that, it, that is unhealthy for it. And it's very good at selecting that one it'll then start going through a process called autophagy, which is um, it looks for all these weak cells in your body or the damaged cells or the ones, the cancerous cells, and it'll mark them off for a process called apoptosis, which is they, they commit suicide, these cells, and then they get eliminated in your body. Um, you increase human growth hormone and you increase testosterone. It's an incredible, incredible thing. So apart from the fact that you're just burning the fat in your body, which you have... Uh, almost an unlimited capacity to do for a, a long period of time, as, as long as you've got fat on your body, then um, all these things happen as well hormonally and your body promotes the production of stem cells. And then as your organs have shrunk, for instance, your liver, which contains fat in it, and um, a lot of people have something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is when the body has um, been subject to too much fructose and, it, and the liver has to store it and it, it gets like if a fatty liver from alcohol but gets it from fructose the fat is stuck in the liver the liver starts reducing in size and um, it gets rid of that of that fat that's in it burns that for energy and, and also detoxes itself coming from there when you've come back from the fast and you're putting only the best stuff in your body and your stem cell production and your testosterone is speaking then you're rebuilding your body from the finest material you can. And you've got like a brand new body with like stuff that's made from fresh stem cells. It's incredible, you know, like so. You're making me want to fast again. Yeah, yeah, I'm not give it a that, that fast. This, I mean, this is the cool thing about it. Like you, you just become brand new. You look, you are, you don't look younger. You are younger. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. And then that promotes longevity, of course, because you're not dealing with cellular debris that's going, staying in your body for decades at a time. You get rid of them. And it also reduces oh. tumors in the body. So it's yeah, That's what I want to know about. Yeah. So, Joe, we'll get some, someone to talk about that as well, yeah. like how, uh, how fasting does these things and how long to fast to achieve certain results. Um, and how long thinner c- people can fast and stuff like that. Yeah, but Marcus, uh, look, he's a good e- example. Like, I've yeah, lost weight. Not, I know I have because I've had weight oh, to do yeah. But Marcus mm. is a skinny guy. He's, he's tiny. 72, 72 kilos, I think. He's so, he's tiny. I, look, I, I'll, I can carry him, like, in, with one arm. <laughs> like, <I can laughs> yeah, you could, you could carry him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but, definitely you should, carry you need to mention how much weight you lost since Christmas, Fuad. Oh, yeah. So, like, b- before Christmas, I-, I wasn't feeling well. and My eating habits had sort of gone to the side. And we've been doing all- a lot of experimenting with the Christmas ebook, And so that had a lot of sweets. Uh, and, you know, you get, yeah, <laughs> you, get, you get on the carbohydrate bandwagon and you can't get off it. Like, you just keep going. Yeah. And Melbourne, when I got back from Melbourne, I was, I was definitely struggling after all the carbs down there. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah. So you, might, notice it, you notice it very quickly, don't you? Mm. So I went up to 103.3 kilos, and uh, yesterday I weighed myself at 95.6. So There we go. Uh, yeah, but, but that wasn't from the fast. So when I started the fast, I was at 98.8, and then mm-hmm. dropped after okay. the fast. Yeah, 
this 95.6. So but it was because you were yeah. working on it with the keto yeah, type. Keto had sort of brought yes. it back down. And then the mm. fasting really accelerated it, which is great. Like for, because like I, I want to lose more weight because I want my body to be lighter and freer. But I'm more excited about the fact that I've got, for instance, some old uh, eczema on my legs, which I, you know, I used to be covered with this stuff. I only have a little bit left on my legs, but that's cleared up. I have some awesome. old wounds that uh, have been there for ages and they've all healed. And that kind wow. of uh, ability for the body to heal itself while it's fasting is miraculous. So um, it's just been the most um, healing experience that I've done in such a short period of time. Nothing, nothing compares to the healing yeah. experience. In, in these it's points. good bang for your buck and it's the cheapest cleanse out there. <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> you don't have to buy a program and take yeah. all the shapes. Quick results at half the price. <laughs> Yeah, so, simple as yeah I, I, mean, I um for people who are uh, wanting to do a fast there's a really good book by Stephen Harry Buner called The Transformational Power of Fasting and that's a, a really well written book very well researched he's a, an excellent uh, herbalist who uh, gives you a very balanced uh, view on fasting and also gets into the emotional and spiritual aspects of it which is uh, of course part of the tradition of why people fast they most people pass for spiritual purposes. And um, if you're interested in that, the book is called The Transformational Power of Fasting by Stephen Harrod Buner. I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Yes, Marcus, you were saying something? Well, well, Fu, well, Fu, maybe when you go on your, um, maybe when you go on your wilding uh, four-day fast in April, you can take your urine samples and uh, display them at the Wellness Base Camp in Kiama. Oh. <laughs> And I'll bring my ones up to Brisbane, Joe, uh, late you Feb, and display them on the speaker table there for everyone to have a look at the incredibly, incredibly quick results <laughs> that fasting brings. In. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about a fasting. museum, like a fasting museum. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, Could be uh, scary. Uh, uh, <laughs> this can I just... <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. You guys, you guys, can I just yeah, ask I you to do uh, a documentary on it? And this <laughs> behind me, <laughs> I did take videos. I took videos of my fast, but I haven't published them. They're sitting on my phone, just in case I ever, <laughs> well, ever want them to. For anything. Would like to share? Oh, I did a soul flash at the end. I was writing a, a podcast. Sorry, a blog post on the fast. Put it up for <laughs> cooking. Yeah, interested. So um, you are doing one, are you? Yeah. 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 For sure. Oh, that's yeah. very courageous of post- you. Oh, that's what well, I was going to say. <laughs> he's posted a video and he's going to post more, a couple more. A it's been more. really positively met. Like we haven't had any. Yeah, it has. Um, so it's crazy. I mean, the idea of fasting is becoming more and more popular. And if uh, people really listen. So many people those, used to uh, intermittent. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think, but it is so hard. I think that's the thing. It's hard work. People talk about they're doing it, but seeing the real life of it, Oh, um, hmm. is a whole different, you know. I'm in no rush. I was just going to say one thing. I finished, off the, I finished off the cleanse, the fast, with a water, with a salt water flush. One oh, you did? Wow. Bang for the buck. How do so, you do that? Dare it's I ask. a litre of water with a, uh, is it a teaspoon or a tablespoon of salt? Mm-hmm. And you drink it. And I think I may have squeezed a bit of lemon juice in there. And it's very difficult to drink, and some people have known to not drink it and, and maybe vomit it up. Yeah, <laughs> but it's I was pretty much like salt water, water is it? it? It's yeah, pretty much salt, like yeah, salt I'm water. not familiar with salt water. Salt water is where you make a um, solution with the salt. Like a, it's about a third of a jar of salt and the rest is water and you let it dissolve overnight. And then you have one teaspoon in a cup of water every morning, first thing. So that's oh, what I've been right. doing. So, yeah, yeah well, this is like it drinking, tastes like salt. Water. Well, this is what it tastes like. It tastes like seawater. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's hard yep. to drink, hey? Um, it's hard <laughs> to drink and you drink a litre of it relatively quickly. Not, you, don't have to, you don't have to gulp it, but obviously yeah. the sooner it's gone, the better. It's easier, and, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah. And then it's more just a nervous wait, waiting for the need to yeah, go to the toilet. Yeah. 
Because I did, and I, and I think, and I don't mean to boast, but I think it's the funniest podcast I've ever been involved with where I shared <laughs> uh, my experience of my first saltwater flush and I was moaning like I was a pregnant man about to give birth. Oh, uh, wow. And I was just in a world of pain. And Sarah couldn't help but laugh because my pain <laughs> threshold is so much less than Sarah's because she's birthed three babies and she's amazing. <laughs> but I was carrying on like a pork chop, having done, you know, having drunk a litre of water, not knowing what was going on in my body. But I'd done it the first time on a full stomach. So the key oh. with the salt water flow is take that litre of water on an empty stomach. And obviously I'd been fasting for five days, so that was easy. But the first time I did it, I think I just disrespected the request for an empty stomach and um, I did it straight after dinner and it was... Okay, so don't do that, right? Do it well, they say, with, they say with soul water, um, it's in the morning on an empty stomach, one teaspoon in yeah. a cup of water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, I wanted to quickly ask you guys about um, liquid fasts because for... A lot of us, we need to work up to, if we're going to do a water fast, we kind of work up to it by practicing with um, yeah, liquid fast. Right, right question. Can you explain yeah, well, what you guys have done in that area? I, well, I know I um, some people, on, juices yeah, or broths or a bit I of both. You have more experience on that than I do because I, I've only well, done like a, a liquid fast for three days, maybe seven years ago. And I don't even remember. I remember I was just drinking like miso soup and uh, apple juice. But uh, right. yeah, but I remember it was fine, but my f- teeth got really furry because I think the sugars in the apple and the bacteria in the miso, uh, um, you know, yeah. having babies. You grew green oh, teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every cleanse or every fast is different. You just have to be, you have to really ask yourself, what do you want? Yes. Like my first, Thing was a diet was when i met sarah i just ate terribly and then so she wanted to do like all organic food for a week or something and i remember i got i got half a day in and i was back on the cigarettes like i couldn't i was just like <laughs> couldn't couldn't do it like well i could have but i was clearly uh, uh, you know my will was not as strong as it is now and then mm. it was like okay that annoyed me that you know it was, was not good for the relationship because we had a massive fight we spent all of this money on food we'd been going out for about a month and her, you know, Sarah's new boyfriend had just gone soft on a, a diet. It wasn't even a <laughs> cleanse. It was healthy food. Um, and then I think it was like, so that kind of, you know, built in a determination to do something properly. So then I think Sarah and I were at a Tony Robbins event and they were doing like a 10-day challenge. And that was just no meat for 10 days. So that was just yeah. one step up. It was just, I was still having bread and all types of things, but it was just no meat for 10 days. But that felt like a really good achievement. And then after that, mm. there was a step up. Then after that, there was a step up. Then it was, you know, vegan. And then it was no grog. And then it was a juice cleanse. And then it was something else. So I think that the key is, as you kind of intimated there, Joe, is you've got to work your way up and don't try to be I a hero. So. That's, that's yeah. the idiot. That is just That's what I was, to, that's what I was thinking we life. should tell people, yeah. Hey, Mark, yeah. um, because- how did you end up quitting the cigarettes, though? I'm really interested. I know it's sort of a bit awesome. I was smoking three cigarettes a day. And I, the only way I could really do it was to say it's not a, it's not a little small habit. It's a thousand cigarettes a year. It's ten thousand cigarettes a decade. And if I'm going to have children, and I'm madly in love with this woman, um, I don't want to set the example of smoking ten thousand cigarettes in my child's first ten years of life. It's just disgusting. Um, <laughs> and that's I just had to remind myself of that every time I felt like a cigarette. I still to this day love the idea of a cigarette. I love the idea of a cigarette because I can yeah. have a great chat with my mum with a scotch and coke and a cigarette, but I'm not going to have a scotch and coke. I'm not going to have a cigarette because if my kids see me doing it, what am I going to say? Like, yeah. it's just so incongruent and it's not funny. But yeah, it doesn't mean I, I don't like the idea of it, but there's no yeah. way I'll do it. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we all change once we have kids? They change yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> Same yeah. thing with that you was, too. It's yeah, good accountability. They are great mm. accountability because they see everything. Even the stuff they don't see with their eyes, they see with their hearts and their souls. Um, yeah. So I just think, you know, and I can't lie yeah. to save myself. I, they, if, yeah. I cannot lie. <laughs> if I've eaten a piece of chocolate and they go, Dad, have you had chocolate or I smell chocolate? I'm like, yeah, I always smell of chocolate because I'm always eating chocolate. That's just the way it is. <laughs> I can't lie about it, you know. That's just what happens. Yeah. Um, Love it. So, anyway. Oh, yes. I've enjoyed this chat. Oh, hold on, I haven't yeah, finished because I've got to I've got to you. talk a little bit about what how I broke my fast so I can finish the whole thing. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, sure. So, um, 
the I actually ate two hours hours earlier than I should have um, because I needed to go for a drive to get my phone battery replaced at the Apple Store. Ah, you didn't uh, tell me that. Well, I, I didn't intend to. I sort of had a service with me with my soup that I'd made earlier the day, during the day. I was going to take it down, but I really didn't feel like I was going to be able to drive. And Lainey looked at yeah. me and said, you can't drive. I said, yeah. yeah. She goes, why don't you just eat now? So you're only two hours away, man. Just eat it yeah. now. Go down that is smart. That, that is and, smart. And that's, that is and that's the, um, yeah, you've got to remember to be flexible with these things. You yeah, have to be. So yeah. I, um, def- definitely help me to have someone with calories in their body to remind me <laughs> uh, yeah. an ability to make wise decisions at that point. So guys, don't operate yeah. heavy machinery while you are fasting. Including cars. Including cars. No. <laughs> so I, I had a, yeah. uh, I'd made bone broth earlier during that day and I'd made my own coconut milk and I added those two together with some kefir, lime, garlic and lemon juice and salt. And that was nice. my first meal. And then after that, yeah. I came back home, I added a little bit of that gelatinous meat, just a little bit of it because I felt like I, um, my body can handle a bit of that. I was craving the protein, like my body just really... Mm-hmm. And I ate that. And then the third meal, there was some leftover rice from the girls' dinner. So I added a little bit of rice into, uh, in there as well. So I had yeah. all, the, all these different... Um, the carbs and the fats and the proteins in there with all the herbs and the anti-inflammatories and some turmeric and fresh coriander and that kind of stuff. So it was really divine. Like I love it. And that's what I had this morning again, but I, instead of the rice, I added in some pumpkin and um, that's what I had for breakfast. And uh, yeah, so that was uh, how I'm breaking the fast, still making bone broth be the basis of everything. And then adding Mm. all sorts of, easy to digest things on top that are super well cooked and super soft. So very much like gaps apart from the rice that I love yeah. a little bit. So yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, I'm trying to stick to um, like, I've been doing low carb for a couple of weeks now and um, ever since Chris, after Christmas and I'm really trying to work back reducing my carbs and doing intermittent fasting. So I'll see how I go, but um, I just, yeah, there's a few things I'm trying to clear up with my health. So. Yeah, this has been helpful for me. Yeah, good. Well, I, mm. I hope that it's given you some kind of uh, momentum here to keep going. Yeah, and- definitely. It doesn't sound as scary, you know, when you no. when you talk through it. Like I, I, I was keeping a close yeah. eye on you. <laughs> I was like, Thursday. how are you feeling right now? <laughs> Start on a Thursday if um, my experience is anything to go by. Because if you fast Thursday, Friday, and then the worst day is the third day, Saturday, um, mm. You can you don't have to work. work, yeah. Mon- uh, yeah. First two days. Well, then. my whole yeah, my whole thing is I don't. I mean, this is just personal. It's a personal view. It's a personal opinion. But I don't. I just don't feel it's it's um a good idea for people to work. I mean, yeah. you're working from home, so it's different. Yeah. But like, if you're in an office environment and you've got expectations or you've yeah, got right. quotas to meet or you've got staff to manage or products to sell, I'd be doing a fast on your annual leave or if yeah, you're really going to, you know. Whatever. I don't want to say take a sick day or a sick week, but you know what I mean? Like it's not a time to have – you don't fast when you've got major responsibilities. No. I was not the best dad in the week that I was fasting, but there was no expectation on me to do – you know, I made breakfast every morning uh, and I did sleepy time at night reading kids' stories and the rest, but when I say I wasn't the best dad, I wasn't I was a bad dad, but I just wasn't – I wasn't – thankfully I'm we had no yeah, major needs. But you know I what I mean? It's kind of like I was absent. It was like being away on business. You know, so I don't think it's I don't think it's wise to put any expectation beyond the fast. The fast is a priority, and mm. um, if you're going to do it, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, with the res- added responsibility of um having to, like you said, for you know driving in yeah, traffic, well getting to work, driving, having those stresses. You know, some people yeah. have done it, but it's definitely not the way I'd be doing it. No. Yeah. Well, you need your body to you rest yourself. anyway. You've got to. Yeah. You've got to be able yeah. to just go have a sleep if you need to. Yeah, and there were some times when I'd go to sleep at ten in the morning, and I'd woken up at six or seven that morning. Yeah. You know, your body doesn't. Wow. You don't. You don't. You can't prepare for when your body's going to say we're doing some heavy cleansing right it's now. Completely um, yeah. It's completely like you feel on top of the world one hour, and then a couple of hours later, you're just like 
on the floor. You just can't move. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so unpredictable. And that was going to be my only other point, uh, for as you say this. I didn't have any. I thought I was going to have these aha moments, come to Jesus moments, where I was just like <laughs> in this state of nirvana with these bright lights and I just thought it was just going to be the end would be this because I kind of feel maybe, but maybe I was wrong. I feel the Bragg's book was kind of like saying you will just feel like you have just experienced heaven on earth yeah, during the, the fast. No. But yeah. I, I didn't have, you know, any major, you know, I had some good epiphanies in terms of my life and, and, and stuff, but I feel like I have them when I'm eating. Um, but, you know, I enjoyed the hikes. I wouldn't have gone on the hikes. But I would just say to anyone thinking, to thinking of fasting, don't put some expectation on yourself that you're yeah. meant to have these major, yeah. incredible breakthroughs mm. because you fasted. I, I it's, it's highly like, likely that you might. And if you do, yeah. it's a bonus. You have to consider the setting with that kind of stuff. So if you are fasting in a meditative space, you've taken like a cabin in the woods on your own and there's no one there. And you you're completely to, focused on, focused on mm. whatever it is you're thinking about. Yeah. Whether if, if prayer is your thing or meditation is your thing around that, whatever it is that you do um, for your spiritual life and you're doing fasting as part of it, they say that, that those things synergize. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's a different, yeah. Um, that's what I would say with my parents growing up, they would often do a fast for spiritual reasons and to really pray about something and that it was a focused time where you could put other things aside and just think about that thing. And mm. um, that's when I think, you know, you may come to great decisions or answers or whatever that you're looking for, but just trying to rest and go through everyday life would be different, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Oh, this has been great. Thanks yeah. for the opportunity to uh, share and talk. No, yeah, it's good. I, I learned lots. Yeah. From, I've been learning lots from you guys fasting, so. <laughs> now I'm just going to put a little plug in. Just to us, eh? I'm okay. just going to put a plug in because I'm biased and I don't get to see you guys as often as you see each other. But, Joe, I'm very <laughs> excited to be seeing you in Brisbane for the Wellness oh, yeah, Space one Camp. One month. One month now. Well, yep. Almost there, and we're going to miss through yeah. by a day or two, but I know you guys are doing some workshops in Brizzy um, yeah. a couple of days before the base camp. So, But I won't. Yeah. Get, I may see you, Fu. I may be up in Brisbane when you're there, but I do get to see you at the Wellness Base Camp in Kiama. Hey, you well, you're welcome to. going on uh, in Brisbane later on, or is it where, where, uh, not in Byron? Can you tell us a bit about that one? Oh, yes, with Bronnie Ware and uh, Carly Nemo Shara Carruthers. That is Saturday, March 3. That in Byron at the Byron Theatre uh, where Joe Witten spoke. Um, oh, yeah. A few years back. Um, mm-hmm. That is called One Day in Byron Bay. If you go to onedayinbyronbay.com, and that is all about, we're often saying, one day I'll do this or one day I'll do that. One day I'll do a fast. One day I'll start a business. <laughs> one day I'll do this. And, and we've really, you know, leaped on that uh, corny one liner to say, well, this is that one day, and that one day is in Byron Bay. And um, it's good. It really helps people to. Yeah, commit to, to have the courage, the connection, the clarity and the choice to really make the decision that is the one thing that they, they keep on putting off, I suppose, to one day. Um, mm. So that's March 3. But, yeah, we can't wait to see you both at the Wellness Base Camp. And um, as always, it's been a joy to spend some time with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we should just mention if people – well, we'll put it in the show notes, but um, if people go to Wellness Base Camp, Camp is it dot com or what is it? Yeah, the, the wellness base camp dot com is the site. The uh, wellness, the wellness base camp dot com. Um, so there's yeah, there's Brisbane February. There's Kayama in yeah, in March? June. Uh, oh yeah, June. No, there's uh, Kayama's June two and Adelaide is April seven. Okay. And they're all one day events. They're all yeah. on a Saturday, um, mm-hmm. nine till five. And Easy. it's the one ninety seven, or there may be two for one specials at the time of recording, depending on when people listen to it. So yeah. uh, it's all at the wellnessbasecamp dot com. Um, guys, come up and see me in Adelaide on the thirtieth of January. Oh, Dr. Yeah, he has invited me up to uh, speak to his people and his community, which is quite a, a big deal for me because I, um, as I was on the paleo journey, I remember I think it was two thousand thirteen when I started listening to that paleo show, and it was fantastic to have a, a local voice talking about paleo when, when I felt all alone in that world in Australia for two years before mm-hmm. this became a big thing and uh, kind of um, yeah I, got, I'm, I feel really honored that Dr. Brett invited me up 
so that I can be on the show that I was listening to back <laughs> that many years ago. So I'll, I'll be That's there. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. When I, I was I was still a, an IT guy by, back then, so you know, um, a lot of changed. Yeah, things have changed. Oh, it's so cool. And then uh, <laughs> Joe and I are going to be in Brisbane on was it twenty first, twenty second. Uh, yep. February. Yeah. February. Yep. For our classes. So you can yeah. see uh, the links in the show notes, or you can go to quirkycooking.com.au slash events, and you'll be able to see the details there. So, um, you know what we should. You know what we should do, folks. At some point, what? this is not for you. We, we should have a seasons pass to events. You know, like in sport, you yeah, get like a exactly. membership, and you can go to as many games as you want. We should have like a <laughs> season pass because yeah. there's so many wonderful things happening. There that is. You can just, you, you buy a ticket or a membership and you can just go to any event that you want across any of the Wellness Couch podcasters. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be very hard to work out, but I think it's a great idea. Well, yeah, the job yeah. is the only problem. Because I want to go to all those things. I want to go to see food in Adelaide, get some quirky cooking tips at the, um, at the classes in Brisbane. <laughs> Might bring Sarah up. Yeah, I'm do half it. A chance to, I'm, I'm half a chance to get to Adelaide food, just just quietly. I'm half a chance to get there. Oh, awesome, man. Um, yeah, and I'm going to see if, Bris, if Sarah while. can get to Brisbane. So yeah, that'd be good. Anyway. Come. Um, I'd love to see you there. We'll go out for yeah, some too. Um, so then scotch and whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. Scotch and soda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, you gave me one of those special drinks. I won't forget it, Foo, at the Go Vida no, annual no. conference. You corrupted me on one of your oh, special man. spirits. Uh, it was nothing. It was nothing. What, what was <laughs> it? Some almond, some almond spirit or something. I couldn't even uh, tell you what it's called. Amaretto, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's an almond liqueur. It's lovely. It's not something that you binge on. It's just something you, you take a, a sip of. And, no, we had a great yeah. deep and meaningful, albeit with loud music behind us. We had a great deep meaningful for yeah. half an hour. Yeah. Great deep and meaningful <laughs> shouting into each other's ears. Yeah, yeah that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun and games. All right, guys. I'll chat to you later. Thanks so much, Thanks, Marcus. Folks. Thanks for what. Thank See ya. Yeah. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.